if you have your Orioles opening day tickets, you can find me there in section 316. This is Corey, and this is the Yo the Anthem podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. Rob, you have your opening day tickets? I do, despite my, uh, I didn't know if you saw my rant on Twitter. Uh, there was a, uh, not oh. only that, but it, it, it was a furious uh, mixture of a lot of conversations that were happening simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. While we were all, well, let's set up the scene. Well, by the way, Twitter is uh, at Robert and Cheek. If you want to check out the, my uh, chastisement of the Baltimore Orioles, <laughs> I had a similar. By the way, if you searched on if, at Legend CB Five, if you searched uh, at Orioles and went in for a while, I was the only. Like, if you search for at Orioles, they didn't even post. It was me tagging them in my <laughs> post. And I'm like, that's right. There seems to be a lot of it on Twitter that day. Of people going like, "What the fuck is happening?" Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. not good stuff. And uh, I'm getting like crazy texts going like, "Why isn't this website working?" I'm just are like, you "Don't talk in? to me." <laughs> are you getting in? I can't get in. I gotta concentrate. Stop texting. I did. We I'm had stuck like on four. This. Okay, so it, here's yeah. the setup. So people who are uninitiated know. But by the way, I did get my tickets. Just so that's clear. So yeah. thank God, we're both going. Yeah. Uh, everyone in our our group got got their tickets. Eventually, so yeah. We're all set. Um. What ended up happening is the Orioles were only going to make se- opening day tickets available to season ticket holders. Which I like. Yeah. Well, I That's mean, great. it's a benefit of being a season ticket holder. Right. Um, and I like the fact that we get, like, the first crack at it. Right. Uh, that's usually how it goes. They usually gave the season ticket holders first crack, and then whatever was left was just, like... Right. Week before opening day, they put them out for sale, and... But this year is not, mad dash. not like other years. Well, this year... We're the defending ALEs champions. Right. So we have a lot of season ticket holders who jumped into the fray. Right. To get postseason tickets last year. Right. And now they're coming up the works of the opening day tickets this year. And I just want to sidebar to that. When we hit the doldrums of late April and early May, maybe mm. mid-May, and we're not looking so good. We're in the basement of the AL East. I hope not. All empty seats. Well, but now, I mean, is it you... you the 83 Orioles ran post-to-post post first place, I think, right? I believe so. Yeah. So th- that doesn't really happen for our teams. Yeah. <laughs> that has, obviously hasn't happened since then. But even like 97, which was a great year, we still had the doldrums midsummer where they weren't doing so great. Yeah. Uh, and then brought it back for the playoffs. <coughs> so all those seats are going to be empty. All those people that are such diehard fans right. will be like, do you want to go to the game? <sighs> no, they're playing the Yankees. I mean, we know how that's going to end up, so why don't we just watch from the bar? I don't really want to see a 40-year-old Alex Rodriguez. Right. <laughs> but no, so I hate that, because all these bandwagon-ass fans who, to get playoff tickets, paid on, on made a deposit on a season ticket, so now they got the season tickets, mm-hmm. and now uh, they're, gonna, they're coming up the works with their extra people. Anyway. Well, uh, I'll say this in addition, just a, a qualm I have with the whole thing. Yeah. If you're a full plan holder or a 29 game plan holder, right? Opening day is included. Right. Obviously, as a full plan, full, full, full season day. plan, you would get it. Yeah, but like it's 29, you get it as well. But but they also get a chance to buy. That's my problem. Those with those extra tickets. Yeah. Something tells me that you should. And who's buying? You know, I'm sure a lot of people are buying them. Like you know, like oh, I'm going to bring my cousin who's a big Orioles fan to opening day. Right. Probably not sitting with you. No. Because they're in the fray as well. Right. I imagine a lot of those 29 game plan, full game plan people are just buying them and selling them on StubHub. Which is probably the truth. The people who are making a business. And then inflating the secondary market. <clears throat> right. Selling which, them for $11,000 for a left field upper <laughs> reserve. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, Rob and Maggie found them for like two sixty eight per ticket. Wow. And a uh, lower bowl. Not lower bowl. Uh, Club level? Cl- uh, no. I guess it would be lower bowl. Um but in the back, up, yeah, up, up underneath it. I'm like two sixty eight a piece. Yeah, that's like a, a twenty seven dollar ticket. Well, you know, if, if somebody said uh, to play the Blue Jays, <laughs> if somebody said like two fifty for a playoff game, uh, yeah, then yeah, okay, yeah, I got you. And uh, granted, I've paid a lot of money for an opening day ticket before. When you on bought it, StubHub and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like one year we didn't buy it, and then we went, and it was ended up being like a hundred and some bucks. Yeah, I mean, before. right. Yeah, and you know, I've bought individual tickets for other games that were pretty pricey on right. StubHub, but and you run that risk that because the day of, like, if you're going, if it's a seven o'clock game and you buy it at three, you can buy it for almost face value. 
Right. But it's a hundred and seventy dollars the night before. Yeah. Just that day it creeps down as you get closer to the game. Yeah. I mean I, I just I don't know. StubHub it can be good and bad. It's great when, when the Orioles were terrible. Oh yeah, yeah. Because then you could buy tickets for like a buck. Now, and I always wonder how that happened. Well, I imagine that a lot of people like couldn't give the tickets away. We'd rather make a dollar on it than yeah, nothing and, or like they were given them right. So like if you had a free ticket and you're just like, well, I'll just sell it for five bucks, five bucks in your pocket, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, rather than have to worry about like, <sighs> yeah. So anyway, pricing it competitively and stuff like that. Anywho, yeah, uh, every single Orioles season ticket holder was lumped in together. I'm assuming everybody because even the people in our group who signed up like. You know, two weeks ago, his season right. ticket holders, like, got in the... Well, and, and so everybody, meaning also the full season and the 29 games, yeah. who already got their tickets, all mixed in together. Right. And uh, I feel like, isn't there a Sunday plan where it's not a full 13 games, but you have, like, a certain number of Sundays? Well, no, it is a 13 game, it's just but all it's all Sundays. Sundays okay, yeah. never mind, because I know people who got that, too, and they were right. in the mix, too. Which, I, uh, to me, is the worst plan. Yeah. I mean, I get it. You know, it's an easy one to plan because most people have Sundays off. Right. Uh, and it's easy to plan, like, you know, like, hey, every Sunday I have an Orioles game. Just like every Sunday I got a Ravens game. Like, right, yeah, yeah. It becomes part of your people. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. It's always day games. Like, yep. when it's summertime, I, I really don't like being out there. Like, one o'clock game. Oh, <laughs> I was, the, I was speaking, Utah Street. I was speaking the other day about, uh, it was just last night with, uh, Shannon mm-hmm. about, uh, when we were in Ridgely's Delight, there was a Yankee game. Right. A one thirty five Sunday Yankee game. We were just like, oh, tickets are real cheap for the bleachers. Let's go sit out in the bleachers. <laughs> and then we find and out why we, we were out there like for a, like maybe an inning and a half, and we were just baking. And we are just like, oh, my God, this is the worst thing ever. And we spent yeah. the rest of the day in the bar, like yeah. the Bud Light bar, watching yeah. it on TV. Bought a ticket to watch it on TV. Well, and, but, I, and uh, we also, I mean, we bought... <coughs> We bought opening day tickets, but to be fair, we'll probably spend the game elsewhere yeah. during the game. Well, I probably we won't remember much of the game. That's probably I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be there. As far for the course, yeah. there will be a lot of drinking, yeah. and uh, yeah, so it'll be fun. A lot of yelling at people who don't necessarily get yelled at. <laughs> like, Wait, was my my Head rant? athletic trainer, Richie Bansells, Richie! Woo! Yeah! You rock, Richie! <laughs> Uh, was my rant about getting thrown out of the stadium, was that an opening? No, oh, that was, yeah. Was that opening day? That was opening day. Because <laughs> I talked about that with Joe, because he oh, was yeah. there for that one, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because it was me and you and Joe and he, she who shall not be named. Oh, fuck, it was. Uh, and I think somebody else was there with both, us, too. It was both of our, or not ours, both Joe and I's she who not shall be named. She oh, yeah. Shall not be named. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah. times. Well, and so that was an that was an epic rant, though. I think I've it told like, that. I'd love to have a six million dollar conversation with the Maryland Stadium Authority. <laughs> <laughs> but so the the cheering, the loud drunken cheering, was everything up and until the police officer showed up, and then that had to be like oh nine, maybe ten. Well, I know you were in law school. Yeah, I was in law school. So we are just drunk and belligerent, and then the cop shows up with the usher. And Rob goes into, like, uh, stone face, let me make a great legal argument mode where I'm just like, uh, listen, as a, as a quasi-governmental organization, but one that's controlled by the state, the Maryland uh, Stadium Authority is, in fact, a government agency. So when you interfere with my ability to say what I want to say, that is a violation of the First Amendment. I would love to have a talk with the Stadium Authority about the $6 million lawsuit I'm going to file, <laughs> which, by the way, let me get your name and badge number because I'm going to include you personally. And the cop's like... Just keep it down. Just, keep, just control yourself. <laughs> just yeah. try, try and do your best. <laughs> well, because there was one, like, and, and uh, another thing I don't get about opening day. Yeah. Uh, is the people who, like, bring their, like, little kids to. No, that's not. Listen, if you're going to bring kids, club level is where you should be. Well, not only. If you're going to bring your kids, you might have to have a real conversation with them about what's going to happen. Right. Just, like. Opening night, probably better for little kids than opening day. Yeah, especially because you get tickets at whatever price point you want. Right, yeah. You know, you don't... (laughs) Opening day tickets on StubHub, $150. Opening night tickets on StubHub, $15. And you're paying $150 for the kid who 
uh, inning and a half in is like, can we go home now? Yeah. Like, I don't really. And there's a guy cursing. What do you mean BJ Serhoff isn't on the team anymore? <laughs> you weren't even alive when BJ Serhoff <laughs> played. And the kid's got to avoid a Kent tripping and falling <laughs> down. <laughs> taking, taking out people as he goes. <laughs> Heads up. Watch for batted balls. Watch for drunken people falling. The <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel. Um, the, uh, oh God, what was it? Yeah, because the, there was that, the, the reason that all started was some dad with his kid in front of you it was just like, do you mind keeping it down? My kid is here. And it was just like, this is the wrong place for your kid to be. No, no, I'm pretty sure I said, what the fuck did you bring your kid to opening day for? <laughs> <laughs> Bad Any, parenting. Anywho, back yeah. to the, back to the subject at yeah, hand. The cattle call for tickets. The Orioles have a online season ticket holder portal. Yes. Uh, where you can go and like print out the tickets that you have or transfer them. Transfer them to you. We've done that before. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, change, obviously, like information, you know, right. put a new credit card on file, all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, and that's the place where you would go to buy the opening day tickets when they went on sale at 2 o'clock. Now, on a usual day, this portal is fine having an old lady with blue hair putting, pulling <laughs> out... And putting it across. Like an, like an old telephone operator. Yeah, but actually for five the computer. Nine, 5934 to Cincinnati. Exactly right. Yeah. So when you, you click the button on Portal, it lights up and she pulls it out and plugs it in yeah. and, and goes back and forth. She's got a paper that she's checking your password for. Baker wants tickets and we just put that one there. Oh, now he wants to pay for tickets. Right, exactly. That, yeah. And that's how the Orioles uh, server system runs. <laughs> it's basically the old lady. <laughs> Um, it's a gerbil on a wheel. Right. And, and when you <laughs> click on the, the tickets you want, she actually has to, like, scroll through the book looking for the ticket. Is it available? <laughs> she goes through the card catalog. Yeah. Click, 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 click. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so it's usually fine. On a normal day, it's fine. Yeah. But on opening day, when everyone in Baltimore is trying to buy tickets at the same right. exact time, it was a shit show. Yeah. And it went down. It kicked us out. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so you and I did the smart thing, which was at one thirty we logged in. Yeah. And then every five minutes clicked on something to keep the connection yeah, to keep, active. To keep it going. Because, and I don't know if you did it because of this, but because we bought playoff tickets and I know how shitty the system was. Yeah. So I wanted to be one click away from selecting my ticket. Yeah. And I made the mistake the last time of sitting down at my computer, let's call it 2 o'clock, when playoff tickets went <laughs> on sale, and thinking that I was going to log in and go straight to the tickets. Yeah. That didn't happen, and shit got crazy. Now, my fault, because as a season ticket holder, I could have bought them the week before, and I didn't. That's on me. <laughs> I missed the... No, wait, wait. I was in I was in Hawaii. That's what it was. Yeah. I was in Hawaii, and I missed the uh, sale day, because I didn't know for a week what day it was. Um, and I wasn't checking any emails. I actually relaxed for that vacation. I learned my lesson. Uh, so <laughs> never go on vacation again. Never relax on vacation. Yeah. I'm, I got to take all my work with me. So, <laughs> um, but so you would have thought, and I can understand your first playoff, your first real demand in what years? Yeah. The one, um, the ALD or uh, the wild card. Well, game. you got to think. You got to think. The internet hasn't really been popular, right? While the Orioles have been. We, like, our bad years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it coincides with the with the lean years. Yeah. So, and before that, I don't even know what would happen. I guess you go to the stadium and you yeah, stand you in line. Buy them in person. Yeah. Right. Probably. Which, by the way, I would have preferred over this. At least I could have taken the day off and gone and bought tickets. Yeah, but then I, I don't want to be the person who has to, like, camp out all night to get a sweet spot in line and... See, I would love that. Can, that would become part of our opening day tradition. Oh, get... get like... Get a tent and have, yeah. like, have a little and, party tent. And we're on stadium property, so we could drink, you know. So we, we hang out, we drink. And Sir, you have to walk to the curb if you want to smoke a cigarette. You're within 20 feet of an entrance. Listen, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, listen, as, that's actually not a bad, that's like a <coughs> genius idea. Because then, you know, you meet people there, you meet other diehard fans, well, what, people are camping out. What I, what I need, the picture I need in the show notes now mm-hmm. is a... Uh, the first year the Miami Marlins opened their stadium, their new stadium. All the people lined up outside. All the people lined up for tickets. It was like seven people. Right. Yeah. Like half of them are wearing like Cincinnati Reds outfits and they're just like. Baseball is baseball. <laughs> I just want to make sure I have my ticket in June. <laughs> <laughs> this line could get crazy any second. <laughs> right. Just waiting for yeah. the, the, the other shoe to drop. And again, why Florida shouldn't have professional sports. 
okay, fair enough. But on the plus side, it's an excuse for us to go to Miami. So yeah. Eh. I don't. I don't know that I would ever convince you to travel to a place that was warm and sunny if I wasn't like. Well, the Orioles are going to play. Oh, well, right. uh, okay. I guess I'll go to Miami. I'll sit in the room and chain smoke for the rest of the time, <laughs> but then we'll go. It'll be fine. Just but, step outside and burst into flames. <laughs> you got to get another nice face down. I'm too pale for this. My policy is now. I just got to go somewhere tropical about every two months because I hit the. I'm about two months away from Puerto Rico, and the 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 tan is fading. So yeah, you got now the base re-up, level is re up on the tan, and then re up again in my, and then re up again in June when we go to the Outer Banks. Yay! Yay. Uh, anyway, so you think they would have learned their lesson during the playoffs? And I, I forgave them for the playoffs because who would have thought? Yeah. And if if mid season someone in Orioles organization had been like, you know, we really need to update our servers because it's mid season. We were looking a little rough. We were you well, know, July. We weren't looking so great. The first playoff. Birth that the Raven or the Orioles had twenty twelve yeah yeah they somebody in the uh, Camden Yards like planning like who who does like uh, private events and stuff like that right. yeah plan or uh, accepted a do- deposit for a wedding oh during that time during the playoffs because no, who would who again well, twenty twelve who would have thought <laughs> we were not again we, we yeah were yeah not looking like it's gonna be playoffs right time. but you have to think that you have to like plan for those sort of like hope keep yeah. hope a lot. Until it looks like you're mathematically eliminated. Right. Just like... <laughs> Somebody with their wedding, like... Right. Check the standings. Where are we at? <laughs> yeah, we're... We're out. 19 and a half games out. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and go on an amazing 27-game yeah. win streak. Pull a, pull a Rockies. Yeah, and... I was going to say. Was it, the, uh, was it the Rockies that year, too? Yeah. Well, Rockies? The Rockies, I think... the It was the year... The last year they went to the World Series, so I don't remember when that was, but... 2006 or seven, seven. or something like yeah, that. Yeah. They went on like a 27 and four run right. to finish the season and beat everyone and took, above them yeah. in the West. So mm-hmm. took kept taking out their took first place. Yeah, and then they swept every single team going oh, through <laughs> to the World so Series. They, they swept the first round. They swept right. the NLCS. Right. And then they got to the World Series and got swept by whoever they played. Cardinals. No. Well, they, no. That would have to be in the same. Yeah. Game. Who uh, Yankees probably? I don't. I don't, I don't remember. Tory, but like Tory Yankees probably. Maybe, but the I, I just remember they they were on like a they were the hottest team right baseball has ever seen, and then all of a sudden they got to the World Series and they lost every game. I, oh god, I feel so bad if I was a Rockies fan. Well, Royals, I mean, because you feel like you you're unbeatable at that point. Yeah, you know, but uh, the Royals were like the, the miracle team all the way throughout, and then well, I mean, team. the Royals were pretty consistent throughout the season. I suppose so. I mean, they weren't like, yeah, you know, they didn't go on like a crazy hot streak at some point. They were they were consistently in the running, right? The Rockies were like completely out of it, and then came back, and then made it to the World Series, and then blew it. Decided they wanted to play baseball right up until the World Series. It reminds me of that uh, South Park episode where they're like. You mean if we win, we have to keep playing this? <laughs> I thought it was over. Ugh. And the other team learns how to hit the balls right. into the gloves and stuff like that. Right. Oh, that's a great episode. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to win. We're going to throw the game. No, we don't want to win either. <laughs> uh, Kyle, you're pitching too good. <laughs> and the the dads and. The... <laughs> well, this is America. Yeah, if you, if you want to know what Rob was like that opening day. <laughs> Just find a clip of Randy Marsh oh, from God. that particular episode of South Park oh. where they're they're playing softball yeah. and he's like got his pants down and around his ankles, <laughs> he's like wearing whitey tighties, and he's just like, "What? I thought this was America. I couldn't say what I wanted. I thought it was America." And by the way, Neil, cops are driving him away. <laughs> Neil, I'm coming for you. Wasn't it? Uh, was it Bat Dad? No, yeah, Bat Dad. Was it Bat Dad? Yeah, <laughs> a guy in a, a luchador yeah. costume. And uh, I am. Oh, it's Bat Dad. I am uh, internet friends, if you want to call it that. Yeah. I guess with uh, Carne Cabaza. Carne Cabaza, who is the luchador for the Orioles, yeah. the guy in the wrestling costume. So, uh, anyway, so you and felt- certainly in the discussion of top five Oriole fans, right? Uh, I'm also friends with uh, the Iron Man, the guy who mm-hmm. has the Iron Man suit with the eight instead yeah. of the chest plate. Um, and I want to say I follow the other, the, and they follow me, the, uh, bird, the... Oh, the fake bird. The, fake, the clearly fake bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah me, me and Romeo are good friends, too. Who's that? Uh, you, you see him all the time. He, um, he's got, like, the construction hat with, like, the mohawk feathers. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He's at every game, and... 
Right. Huge Orioles fan. Yeah, and so one of the tweets I posted was because uh, I was talking to Neil, and he was like, "Yeah, I can't get tickets either." And I'm like, "If if Carne Cabeza doesn't get <laughs> opening day tickets, there's something wrong with this system. <laughs> like your big fans really should." Uh, and you think that it the should, Orioles would should reach have just out. broken through a wall? Like well, you, you think the Orioles would be like, uh, "There are certain people we need to have a an understanding with." That you're not famous enough for us to pay for your tickets, right? But we'll give you the back door. Well, to that's make sure you that's get that's what I was kind of expecting. Yeah, I was kind of expecting on on the day yeah. when we were buying the tickets that I wasn't expecting Peter. No, and obviously Buck and Dan Duquette and all them are down in in Sarasota, right? So yeah. I don't expect them where to make I'll a be. fancy trip. Sure, but you know maybe like John Angelos, okay, or like Rick Dempsey would do what? Just like come up to the to the restaurant, and knock on the door. Be like, is Corey here? And be like, Corey, it's Rick Dempsey. I'll be like, hey, Rick, how's it going? You're it's been a, a while. Name. You're on a first name basis. It's been a while since we, we've seen each other. Right. And he's like, well, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I have tickets here for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have 50 bucks? And I'll just give you these two tickets and then we'll call it even. Mm-hmm. Be like, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for saving me the time. Oh, well, we can't have opening day without you. Right. Well, Clearly. to be fair, we've been there for like the almost a decade. Yeah. So. Well, I've been doing it, well. More longer than that. No, because the decade was 06. That's when you started going. And I came down and went yeah. to you in 06. Well, I mean, I was going before Hofstra, too. Oh, I guess the okay. Hofstra years, I wasn't at opening day. I was at consecutive years, at least. 06. <coughs> uh, and I <sighs> went every year except for, I would go 07, because the girl. Yeah. <laughs> she who shall not be named. No, no, but it was the one before that. Oh, yeah, the yeah. The one who burned all my clothes on the front lawn. Yeah. Which probably happened around about opening day of that year. Uh, anyway. Too busy putting out fires. Right. So uh, getting back to the to the point is that they should have learned in 12 that it was a problem. And then they should have definitely learned in last year in the playoffs that it was a problem. And what we learned is that they did nothing to address it whatsoever. And people – everybody was freaking out. I had you know a bunch of text messages coming in like, did you get tickets? Did you get tickets? Like, other people – people I didn't even know – bought season tickets yeah but who apparently knew uh, obviously they knew i had season tickets so they were like did you get in did you get tickets i'm having trouble like is there something i'm supposed to be doing <laughs> nothing right so listen orioles get your shit together yeah buy a real server well and not even that I, I and discussing other options do a lottery yeah because my guess is every season ticket holder who wanted season tickets really uh could fit in the stadium I think. Well, you know what? Honestly, I think as as much as I I, I like the full and twenty nine game plan holders getting a chance to buy additional season or additional right. tickets. Yeah. I think that uh I think there should be a no resale thing. Right. So, you know, do one of those things like if we find your ticket on StubHub or like Louis take, C.K. does this. Yeah, we take your we take your ticket away. Louis, Louis C.K. has all the tickets marked. Right. So if he's playing at the Hippodrome or whatever, right, and he finds the ticket that you bought for his website on StubHub for a hundred dollars more, right, then he revokes your ticket, right, and refunds you your your money and sells it on his website again, right. The Orioles could do something like that with the twenty nine and full game plan holders. Yeah. Say like, listen, if you want to buy extra tickets, then feel free. You well, get and, you get the week ahead of time to purchase them, but if we find them on StubHub, we're gonna yeah we're gonna revoke it. We're gonna revoke that ticket. And, and uh, I am less uh, capitalistic than you, so I just say let all of the the season ticket holders get one, and then we let other people order them in order. So yeah. uh, everybody gets one ticket because I think everybody would easily fit in the stadium that way. Probably. And then we go to full season ticket holders, get a chance to buy however many more. Yeah. And then 29 game and then, you know, or there's one in between 40 some or 80, uh, you know, 40. It's full season, 40, 20, 46, 29, 13. I thought it was just the full 29 and 13. I think there's one 13. more. There's one more in between. It's like a half season. Hmm. Uh, anyway. But nonetheless, whatever. Those people in order get to buy however many yeah. before it gets released to the public. Because, you know, by the way, October, I know I want season tickets and I want to go to opening day. Yeah. So you start that process in January, 
theoretically, if I see the email, I will be on it. Right. Mainly, I will get reminded by you <laughs> that I need to do it. Did you so. buy your tickets? No, <laughs> shit. By the way, uh, at 12 o'clock before the 2 o'clock deadline yeah. was when I switched to the D plan. <laughs> <laughs> Just got right on that. Yeah, got right on that. But um Did you call up your guy or something like that? Well I called, he wasn't there, and like sure. so I just talked to anybody yeah. and I got like so much attitude from the girl and I was like, listen, I have I've been I've had these tickets last year. I rolled it over because I just paid for it. I don't want to change anything other than the seats. They're not the seats, the days that I'm going. Yeah. And I don't want to be individual, I want the D plan, that's all. Yeah. And she like had to go up to the manager well, and that's, come back down. That's the other one too, like uh, I've had to call the Orioles a couple times this off season, right? And like any time I call anybody, except for my guy, right? My guy seems to be the one in the warehouse who's like Fire super me. happy to be in his job yeah. and like is yeah. happy to do like any. And I give him like odd requests from time to time, and he's just like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." Right? Let me see what I, you know. What I don't know if I can do that, but I'm going to I'm going to work for you. Yeah. I'm going to see what I can do. Yeah. But like, thank you so much, Sean. Is that but, your guy? Yeah, Sean. Uh, but like almost any other time I call the Orioles, it's always just like, what? If you, yeah, if you call the general line, it's just like, Orioles, what do you want? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to buy two tickets for tonight's, uh, Oriole Yankee game, mm-hmm. uh, in the bleachers. <sighs> Don't you know you're supposed to call the other number? Not this number. No. Be like, what number do I call? <sighs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Thank you for all of your help. <laughs> All right, the number you want to call is one eight hundred. Go fuck yourself. It's, oh, can you can you uh, can you connect me? Really? You can't just dial one eight hundred. Go fuck yourself and leave me alone. Well, you know that uh, you can also come down to the box office and buy those seats in person. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to bother me at yeah. all. Yeah, you don't have to call me. Just come down and buy them. Please. Yeah, buy, buy them from somebody who has more edit there. <laughs> Who's cheerier about the whole thing? Yeah. So <laughs> they put the happy people in the window. They do, and they must because <laughs> those people are chipper like ninety nine percent of the time. Well, from time to time, I get somebody who's like, I feel like, uh, though you know what? Honestly, I do it too. Like if people call up, like right. So people call up the restaurant from time to time. Yes, and they're like, uh, I'd like to order one pork sandwich. I'll be like, What else would you like? And they're like, That's it. I'm like, Just come in. <laughs> yeah. and they're like, Well, I only have a thirty minute lunch break. So I don't want to wait in line. Be like, well, you have to wait in line either way. Right. To pay for it. Right. And they're just like, well, I mean, it would make it my life a lot easier if you just made it now. I'll be like, let me tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. This is not me being a dick. This is just me being honest with you. It's going to get made sitting there. No, not even uh, that. If I send through one ticket and it yeah. says like, you know, Jim's picking it up in 15 minutes. Then when you get there, after you've waited in line and paid for it. They'll make the same. They say, Jim's here. And they go, okay. And they spend five minutes looking for the ticket. Right. Find the ticket, put it at the end of the line, and right. make it. So <laughs> Doesn't you, really you've actually anything. lost time. Yeah. It takes longer to do it that right. way. Not and that it, we do that, but right. that it, that's just what the cook is going to do. Right. But then right. the other the other thing, too, is people call up and they're just like, yeah, I'd like to place an order and I want to pick it up in 15 minutes. I'll be like, okay, what can I get for you? Uh, I need 50 pounds of pulled pork hot. <laughs> just be like... <sighs> I can't, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> and like, why not? I come in all the time and I get one pound. I'm like, yeah, one pound I have hot. We got that, yeah. And they're like, well, you don't have fifty pounds. Hot? I'm like, no. <laughs> even if I did have fifty pounds hot, then nobody's know. getting sandwiches for thirty minutes while we heat up more. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's so the- like, well, you know, if I just came in, you would do it. And I'm like. <laughs> No, hey, we would. We would say, sit on over there, and <laughs> sit down. we'll warm up your 50 pounds. In 20, 25 to 30 minutes, we'll have it right. ready for you. Right. <laughs> well, anyway, so, yeah, Orioles, uh, here's what it comes down to. I love the team. I love it. And this love is, the ballpark. This is a uniquely Baltimore problem. Yeah. Because I think we've talked about it, we talked about it last year. Opening day, not such a big deal other places. No. It's just the first game of the year. Well, in some places it is. Boston. Since Cincinnati's a big one. Right. Uh, Boston's actually not that. Because I went up to... Oh, that, that's right where you went. That's right, yeah. I was I was there when Brendan was going to BU for right. his orientation. I was with the family Hi, in Boston. And he was just like, uh, so uh, is this my, this is my dorm? <laughs> well, no, this isn't your dorm, but it's... It's what your dorm is. You know, th- right. These are what the dorms look like. Right. Oh, uh, 
kind of hoping to measure. Because <laughs> I have some things I want to bring along. You know, I got a, a lava lamp. <laughs> and a hot Asian girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a... I need to figure out how many bodies I can put in the dresser. Right. Like, what? You know, clothes. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's not that big of a deal elsewhere. Right. Well, did I ever tell you the story of my mom in opening day? No. Okay, so... Was that when uh, EP projectile vomited and your mom picked No. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the, my mom's awesome story. Yes, it was. Um, so, my, my mom was living in New York... Uh, when she was first dating my dad. Right. And she traveled down on like weekends and hang out. Um, oh, what a difference. Uh, yeah. 50 years. Before. Yeah. And uh, it was opening day and she was sleeping over at my dad's place. Wait, wait, my wait, dad's wait. apartment. Wait, wait, what now? Were they married? No. Well, clearly she's not going back to New York the same day. Okay, so... So, so she slept in the guest room. Right, okay, I got you. They slept yeah. in separate beds, like Lucy and Ricky. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What, what was the thing? What was the, what you made in Ocean City? What do we call that? The chastity wall? <laughs> the chastity wall. <laughs> the great chastity With the, pil- <laughs> the pillows and the blanket. <laughs> I had sex in the chastity wall. <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, that's, when, that's when you take a body pillow and you make a line between yeah. the two people. A and dividing line. Divider, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> There's no incidental contact. I think that was my term, too. I don't want any, <laughs> I don't want any incidental contact. And then I had um, sex with Corey in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> the end. <laughs> well, the number of times that I've been present unknowingly <laughs> to, to your sexual escapades. <laughs> and sometimes knowingly, too. <laughs> Just turn around. I'm just like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, Rev. <laughs> I'm right here. Please. Well, no, no, occasionally, I've answered the phone though while you. Well, were... that's the thing too. Cause <laughs> I, I had to, for uh, during the college years. Yeah, and the law school years too. I yeah, think. I would yeah. give I would give Rob calls and be like, hey, you want to go to Sbarro's? And random, like yeah. at nine thirty at night, not yeah. dinner, not late night snack, just like eh, it would be all over the place. Yeah, the calls would come in at any old time. Right, but for whatever reason, whenever I did, Rob was. Engaged with somebody at the moment, so, so I'd call him up. I'd be like, "Hey, bud, what's up? Uh, what's going on? Do, hey, man, do, how you doing? Do you uh, would you like to go to Sabaros? Huh? Oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, well, you kind of caught me in an awkward moment. Uh, can you give me like ten minutes so I'll wrap this up and then I'll call you back? i be like, yeah, sure, no problem. Can we talk about how rude I am picking up the phone in the middle, by the way? I'm just imagining what these what the women must have thought when I'm like, oh hang on, it's Corey. Hang on. Hey, what's going on, man? I, I like to think I like to think of it at, like the uh the bit from Fight Club. Oh wait, wait, where, when he comes to the door? Yeah, when Durden goes to the door, he's to finish her off. She's, she's just like, Who's that? Shut up. <laughs> that is <amazing. laughs> That's basically how it was. Are you gonna pick up the phone? Uh yeah. yes. <laughs> Anywho, uh, my mom comes down, uh, and she's staying with my dad, and she wakes up in the morning of opening day, because my dad has a clock radio, he's fancy like that. Right. And, uh, when the alarm kicks on, it turns on the radio station. Is it a Rolex? (laughs) It is. So when it got stolen, he got a lot of money for it. (laughs) But, uh, so my mom's sleeping peacefully. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad's lawyering at this point. Right. So he's getting up at like 6 a.m. Sure. To like get ready for his lawyering job. Right. Um, 6 a.m., radio kicks on. And this is what, like my mom like shoots up out of bed, like right. Undertaker style. Like just like, <laughs> <laughs> just rocks up. Because like on the other Very end of the room. Re- reference, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last time Undertaker actually wrestled. No, he still wrestles. Really? Yeah, I don't think he d- he's done that for 25 years. But Yeah, so for those who may least. not remember yeah. from when somebody would get to the top rope and, like, he's out. He's out. Yeah, he's and done. They, in the air, he just, like, sits stone up. Well, not even that. Like, he sometimes he'd do it, like, the he would be, like, out and he's just laying straight back on the, on the canvas. Right. And the other person's, like, you know, directed towards the crowd. He's just like, yeah, what do you think about that? I just took down Undertaker. And all of a sudden he just sits up like, ugh. And then everyone goes crazy. He's just like, yeah, you I, love me. And then when they turn around, he's just like, choke slam. And then, I remember my favorite was the uh, casket match where they got got Undertaker in the casket. 
fancy, <laughs> fancy, fancy, <laughs> kicks it facing backwards. He kicks yeah. the top of the casket, and you see the arm just <laughs> out, <laughs> rip it up, sit up. Ah, that's right, you love me. <laughs> and choke slam into the casket, broke the legs. Yeah. I love wrestling. Undertaker anyway. was badass back so, in the day. 6 so, a.m. 6 a.m. <laughs> Side bar. Yeah, 6 a.m., the alarm goes off, uh, and my mom shoots up, like the Undertaker, and on the other end of the radio, she hears, like, you know, usually it's just like, you're listening to 101.9, and now we're going to listen to a little Sunny and Cher to get your morning going. Like, that was the normal, like, radio <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the morning for her, but this one is just like... We're at the stadium pub. It's 6 a.m. Everyone is drunk as shit. And we're about to fuck some whores on live radio. Everyone better get down here. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> like, my mom's just like, what the fuck is that? And my, my dad turns to her just like straight face. He's just like, it's opening day. Yeah. Like, do you, you don't know? Like, it's opening day. What do you, what do you want, woman? And it's just like, she's just like. Yeah, but it's 6 a.m. and he's screaming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's opening day. He's been drunk for two hours. <laughs> like, dude, what, where do you live? It's, it's opening day. And then right. my mom's just like, is, this, is it like this for every baseball game? <laughs> what part of opening day don't you understand? Like, right, yeah. And then that's when my mom learned that opening day is like... A little different in Baltimore. Yeah, a little bit different. Here. Right, yeah. Um... <laughs> it's certainly different than New York, where they don't seem to give a shit at all. No, it's, it's just, another, just a normal yeah, game. Just a normal it's the game. First game of the year. And uh, yeah. I was gonna say, I know. Well, since it's the- a one thirty-five game, so I better get off work at about uh, twelve forty-five. <laughs> Take the train out. Get the subway. <laughs> Um, I have enough time to get a hot dog and a beer. I have to sit comfortably <laughs> in my seats that I, I paid some... ten grand for. <laughs> right, <laughs> with a Lexus symbol on yeah. the back. Um, I have some friends in Louisville, and <coughs> they go up to Cincinnati, and apparently it's a it's a show in Cincinnati. Well, Cincinnati is the first professional baseball team, right? Yeah. So they take opening day very seriously, as every team should. Yeah. But uh, no, so and I imagine it's got to be for fucking Miami, well, <laughs> and Tampa. <laughs> I feel like if uh, if and when I do move to the West Coast and I want to get up for opening day, that it's going to end up with my arrest because I'm going to be the only <laughs> drunk person at 7 a.m. <laughs> in front of Angel Stadium, yeah. Anaheim, just like, whoa, opening day! You're going to be at like Chipotle, like, where's your beer? <laughs> oh. Sir, we don't sell beer here. <laughs> Cali Tort. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm depressed now. Uh, I miss California tortilla. So, Can we pour one out for our homies <laughs> at California tortilla? Two beers for the price of one on oh, opening man. day. Ugh. Oh, that got trouble fast. <laughs> well, it got trouble because we started drinking four hours before well, that. that. <laughs> you got to start with the pyramid. Like the dollar pose before 10 a.m. And, oh, and, God. And between like five of us, there's like a 30 pack like just piled up. And we're just like... <laughs> We're like, we are so ready for baseball in seven hours. <laughs> anyway, I, li- it was last year or the year before. And now, it might have been years before that because I think she should not be named was there. But the waitress came by and was like, guys, I can't allow you to, to – and she was about to say to to make a beer amid. Yeah. And she was just like, no, that's impressive. Keep going. And like walked away. <laughs> yeah. Like we she, already had a six-level yeah, beer She was just like – I can't let you... You know what? No, that's impressive. Good. Go ahead. Good. Go on you. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody's double fisting at the yeah. table because building the beer mid is, in fact, the reason to drink. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. We need more beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and all the years where it's just like, Dollar Bows ends in five minutes, and then you buy, like, 30. <laughs> Six. Just... I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking warm beer for like three hours. You're just like, I don't care. It was a dollar. <laughs> it escalated to three dollars after that. It's, I, I would, it's not even worth it. I, like, I want to go back and lay down at the hotel, but beer. Sorry to pay for. <laughs> I have so many beers in front of me. Anyhow. I mean, at some point I did say that too. I'm like, oh. Maybe this was part of the Orioles plan. They knew that we would talk about it. We would oh. complain. Yeah. And then instinctively go into great opening day stories. So therefore, like... Uh, and here, it's it's not worth it. It's not fair and it's not worth it. But no. there is no... Like we were talking about before, we, we last year got the hotel. It looks like we're going to be able to do that again because everybody got tickets or whatever. But um, it's like, I'm going to go. Yeah. The question for the Orioles is, do I have to pay $600 to go or do I have to pay $27 Right. Go? And that's... It's just not... You're the uh, what I was going to suggest is a lottery 
where they can look at us and be like, oh, okay, so you've been coming for <coughs> you've been coming for ten years, ten years, right? Every year, so. Let's give you a little bit of credit for that in the lottery. Somebody who get their ticket this year gets mm-hmm. one. You get more balls in the lottery. Yeah. Yeah. And and make it a chance or luck or whatever. But more importantly, I still think every uh, season ticket holder could have had a seat. The problem is you opened it up to everybody at the same time and people who already had tickets are uh, coming in again. So, Well, if you don't mind, I know this will be a very sports heavy show. Sure, yeah. But I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about the NCAA tournament. I was going to say, I guess it's going from professional sports to not professional sports. Right. As we know, there's no money made by the NCAA. Well, it's a completely nonprofit. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, Endeavor, the whole thing. All the advertisement goes to school books. Right. Uh, and uh, scholarships for the students. Right. Which are not payment, by the way. They're giving an education. And in fact, it not only just scholarships for the students, but a small percentage goes to give underprivileged children the opportunity to have a college education. That's awesome. Which I think is great yeah, for the definitely. NCAA. Definitely good. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh. Oh. So I was informed that actually the NCAA makes a lot of money off of this. But they're nonprofit. Uh, like two and a half billion dollars. What? And uh, the students don't get paid. Right. Uh, sure, they get scholarships. Right. But usually they're majoring in things like uh, African American studies, <laughs> which is apparently like a class where they're just like, who's Dr. Martin Luther King? And then you just write like a black guy and they're like, hey, A+. Plus. A plus for, yeah. <laughs> You well, know. You, you take Swahili, and yeah. they're like, okay, final exam. How do you spell Swahili? And you look up, and Swahili 101's written on the board, and you're like, got it. S-W-A. <laughs> hey, hey, don't look. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to put my face in this book. <laughs> but to be fair, <laughs> I, Nobody I, better be looking at how Swahili is spelled up here. We, we I, I do should say <laughs> that there are some good stu- – I, I don't want to characterize everybody that right. way. Richard Sherman – despite being an asshole, which I can appreciate, is a <laughs> genius and graduated from USC. Well Stanford. Deser- Stan- sorry, Stanford. Well-deserved with Don't his- make that mistake too many times. Nah, I'm not in LA yet. Uh, <laughs> but no, so like, um, so they do make a lot of money. Yeah. Billions of dollars. Yeah. And not only does the NCAA make money, but the individual schools make a lot of money. Well, not only that, but it, it's uh, – uh, a point made very clear on the the John Oliver last week tonight episode from Which last I, week. Everybody should watch. By yeah, the way. yeah. Um, the the advertisements that go along with it are almost on the level of PBR, right? The professional bull rider. Because right. <laughs> this Coca Cola halftime report is brought to you by Sprint. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> Yeah. Like it would. <laughs> At one point, the sponsors are going to be sponsoring the sponsors. Yeah, and they have official everything's of the right. NCAA. The official ladder. And he's like, it's not getting even toward the, the cutting of the right. uh, net. You, Warner, yeah. the official ladder of the NCAA. <laughs> the official scissors of cutting down the net. <laughs> I have a Warner ladder. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> Play school, the official scissors of the- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, but here's the thing. And, and I think it was well put in that. That uh, the gu- person selling the jersey in the student bookstore yeah. makes ten bucks an hour, right? More at Stanford because it's probably fifteen in the Bay Area, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the guy who wears that number and makes the money for the school gets paid nothing. Well, you know, I I think the the only fair way to do it mm-hmm. um, is money for ancillary things should go to the students. Okay, like the for jerseys, certain that. jerseys, and jerseys, like that. Um, appearances at places. I wouldn't do that because then it's going to just trickle down to them just doing appearances all the time. Eh, fair enough. Okay, but like if you make NCAA fifteen right. for the PlayStation, even though it doesn't have the guy's name on the jersey, well, it, it can. It could have the name. I guess it could. Yeah, you could just make a licensing agreement where the players would get a cut of that. Right. You know, maybe. <laughs> It might not be a lot. Maybe you get 50 bucks how after about, you factor in every single right. player in college basketball. But, but how about this? How about <coughs> at a minimum, mm-hmm. if you start playing uh, sports and you hurt yourself, you get to finish college. How yeah, about that? Right. Because that is the worst thing is that these like, – Or at, somebody, the very, at the very least, you get your uh, health taken covered? care of. Yeah. Because that's you, what happens. If you blow out your ACL, at least they fix your ACL. <laughs> right. But not but I mean that's the worst part. Right now, 
you get nothing. If you're on the team, you got great medical care. As soon as they're like, oh, no, that's a career-ending injury, they're like, okay, so we're going to need the 27000 back for the semester, <laughs> and you're going to be responsible from here on out. And if you could stay out of the facilities, that would be great. Uh, we know a great doctor. It's actually a clinic, um, <laughs> free clinic, right down the uh, highway there, so you can check that out. Just go in and ask for Dr. Leo Spichemin. <laughs> Get you all basically. Get you all sutured up. Uh, go in and ask for Doctor Nick. What? <laughs> yeah, when you walk in, just say, "Hi, Doctor Nick." <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, but no, so it's it's, and again, I, I, I'm kind of a commie in that way, and or I'll, and I'll say that. But there's got to be a level of equity and fairness to this, and. When uh, there was NBA players, and I think that's who it was who were talking about it, saying like, oh, no, there was times in college where I didn't eat. Yeah. Or I ate at the stadium because I knew that we would, they would feed me because they right. knew who I was. Yeah. And they could slip me food and it would be fine. But if I didn't have money on my card to go to the student center and get yeah. food. And, you know, these guys are, are – work. they're working like professionals. Um I want to say it was Richard Sherman, but it might not have been, who was talking about being a, an NCAA football player where you wake, yeah, up, yeah. At, wake up at 6 a.m. and you go to the gym and then you go to your first class and then you come back and do, hit the weight room and then you go to your second class and then – Practice. Go then, to pra- yeah. early practice and then your third class and then your late practice and that's your Monday. Yeah. And by the way, when you get it down at the end of the day, you are reading your uh, playbook. You're yeah. studying the playbook. You're studying all the stuff that you have to study and then to bed because it starts again next tomorrow at 6 a.m. and you have your Tuesday schedule. But like they're not getting paid for that. They're not getting paid for that at all. Yeah. And in it, I can't imagine the pressure on somebody to perform and then get nothing back. And these guys are not eating because they yeah. their scholarship covers just and only going to the school. Right. Well, two, two last things for you. Yeah. Um, uh, did you fill out a bracket? I didn't fill out a bracket. Did, have you ever done that? No, I don't. Do no, that. you don't. No. I, and I mean, here's the thing. I, I will comment on the NCAA because the politics of it offend me, <coughs> but I have no interest in college sports. Yeah. And I think that that largely comes from the fact that we went to a not so uh, athletically inclined college. Right. Well, I mean, if, I think if we went to Michigan, oh, we I would, would be, care a lot more. Than, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if we went to Maryland. Yeah, I would care a lot more, and I see people who ne- who didn't go to Maryland, and we were talking about that before. I don't get the being a huge Terps fan, but you well, had it's like a- it's like a state pride thing. Okay, like you know, just like I'm an Orioles fan, right? Like to an extent, I'm a Terps fan, um, and that isn't fake. But you know what? That it, doesn't feel fake to you, no? Because you know what? If the Terps weren't in the tournament, right? But Coppin State was, right? I would be pulling for Coppin State. Okay. Now I probably won't watch every single game of the tournament, right? And I still, Coppin, I'm, or, the, or every game that Coppin State plays, right? But well, I'll certainly be, it'd just be the one. It'd be yeah, sure the one that they play against Duke and right. get blown out by thirty and <laughs> right. go home. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, the, Terps the UMBC well. Retrievers on their final four <laughs> run. I'm just like yes. Baltimore County, what's up? End of the first <laughs> quarter, and it's forty-seven to six. Okay. <laughs> Maryland, Maryland the cheerleaders the, have actually come out onto the court to play against <laughs> Maryland in the game against Valparaiso started off nine to two. Yeah. And I've put on Facebook like strong start by Maryland. And then all of a sudden Valpo came back and I was just like, God, I hope that status doesn't <laughs> bite me in the ass. You're the gym, like somebody, so that's what you're saying. Somebody's you're reading it at halftime when the Terps are down by 20 and they're yes. just like, they're just like, you're a jerk. <laughs> no, but the, uh, I, I'm pulling for Maryland. I think this, they have a legitimate shot at winning. First year in the Big 12 and really competed? Yeah. The Big 12 part still bothers me, but yeah. the Big 10 part still bothers me, but, you know. Is it Big 10? Yeah. I, I it think so. 12. I thought it was Big 10. But there's more than 10 teams in it. Oh, well, yeah. That's but been the case than, forever. I was say, there's more than 12 in the Big yeah. 12, too. But nonetheless, so I don't get the cheering for Maryland. I, I always felt fake, but maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it should be okay to... To cheer for Maryland, even if I didn't go to school there. But well, I, what I like about college sports is that it changes over so much, right? So you really can be a fan of the team rather than the individual players. The individual right. players, right? Because you know, Des Wells comes and goes. Does he? I have no idea. Juan Dixon comes and goes. No Joe Smith comes and goes. I'm going to name a Maryland player until you know. Go ahead. Len Bias comes and goes. Mm-mm. Steve Blake comes and goes. Mm-mm. God, it's not even Steve Blake. No. Are these football, basketball? Basketball. Bas- no, no, no. Good luck with that because 
Okay. Was Michael, did Michael Jordan go to Maryland? No. Oh, okay. He went to North Carolina. We're going to. It's going to be. Tori Smith. Yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> now we got one. Yay. Um. So go Terps. Hopefully they're not eliminated by the time this podcast goes. Because <laughs> they do play tomorrow. Yeah, okay. they play on Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. We're recording this on Saturday, as right. per usual. So uh, you suck, West Virginia. And that's about it. Okay. So uh, if you fear the turtle, feel free to go to OTheAnthem.com, Corey at OTheAnthem.com, OTheAnthem, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Vimeo, and the listener line, 443-219-7595. What's that number again? 1-800-GO-FUCK-YOURSELF. <laughs> That's 1-800-367-443-219-7595. <laughs> and uh, if you want to see my epic anti-Orioles, get your shit together tirade where I did compare the Orioles to the Yankees, by the way. Ooh. And the only ne- the only comments I got were based on the... Wait, 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 wait now. Wait, wait, wait. Come wait. on, it's not that bad. <laughs> exactly. It's not that bad. Uh, but that's what I was waiting for. Uh, you can find me anywhere on social media at Robert N. Cheek. Um, and uh, foundingthefuture.us, themovementinsurrection.com, adeaddrop.com. Um, so find me there and go buy my book. Buy Rob's book. Anyway. So... Uh, this is going to be posting on Tuesday, so let's hope that Maryland doesn't get it in, get out. But I encourage everyone – and can you put a link into the uh, John Oliver story? Yeah. It, it really is good. It's like 19 minutes long and it covers – But it's totally worth it. Totally worth the whole watch uh, and it will go much more detail than we could now. So um, as yeah. always – Well, that's that's what happens when they write a script. <laughs> right. Yeah, not, rather than just making it up as we go. We don't – we don't uh we, we don't sit around before the show starts and go like all right and then you say no 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 I had a chance to have a three way with those two <laughs> and I was just like bullshit secretly by the way we do what's, have a script those what's, are for the, sale. <laughs> what's the next what's the next part line <laughs> line <laughs> we're just standing here with our reading glasses and our right. <laughs> this is Corey and this is the O the Anthem podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how Corey would read it. Good afternoon, read. everybody. This is Rob. <laughs> how do you spell good afternoon? This is what, seven zero. <laughs> se- seven O's. I yeah. said seven zeros. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why Corey takes forever to read a book. <laughs> thank, thank God I had a college education. <laughs> Yay, thank, God I was a, thank God I was a student athlete. <laughs> All right. As always, you've been listening to the O the Anthem podcast, part of the O the Anthem digital network. For Corey... And for the Terps, go Maryland. It's not the cheer. What's the cheer? Go Terps, go. Go Terps, go. Uh, this, is <laughs> this is Rob. Have a good week, everybody. Numerals are overrated. Okay.